what is mind genomics? Um, it's very interesting to be able to capsulize it in about 15 seconds. It's really the experimental science of the everyday. Uh, it's looking at how the mind, how people organize everyday experience, what's important, what's not important, and figuring out how different people respond. When, for example, you go to a store, you may look at service, other people may look at prices, other people may look at the layout. Mind genomics really is the science of how people look at the everyday. When I developed it 30 years ago, I was asked by Court Shepherd of Colgate in Canada, can you help us figure out what we say to sell more toothpaste? And it sounds like a very simple question. But he said, no, we have a hundred different things that we could say and show. What is the combination of things, of ideas, of messages, of pictures that we could show that will interest consumers. So we developed a method first on paper and pencil, later on on the computer, where we would figure out different classes of messages, what the product has, what the product does, what your emotional benefits are, how you respond, even pictures. We'd mix and match these combinations. We'd give them to the consumer, get the response of the consumer so you can't game it because it's a blooming, buzzing confusion. And from their reactions, we'd figure out what's important and what's not. We'd isolate different groups of people with different mindsets. So we knew with group one what to say. We knew with group two what to say. We knew with group three what to say. And they were very different things. So we look at the world as a big general group, but actually there are different mind genomes, different groups of people running around. And we were asked by Queens College whether we could take this science of mind genomics and use it for a more noble purpose, to give it to students, to educate them, to let them use the science to become more competitive in their careers. And just recently, we've been involved in two other uh, branches of this. One of them is uh, ICE, this Institute of Competitive Excellence, uh, branching out not only in the United States from Queens College, but also in the Democratic Republic of Niger in Africa, one of the poorest countries. The president there wants to advance the country by bringing in high-level technology to give to the students. And he's asked us, through Queens College, would we donate mind genomics and create an institute in Niger so that the students could be able to use advanced techniques to know what other people in other countries want so Niger could produce them. And the most exciting thing is we were invited by Columbia University's Peter Coleman to join uh, his Center for Conflict Resolution. And he said, if this works, why not use it, not to sell uh, pasta sauce or Colgate, not to create products, but to create world peace. We were able to find out three groups of Palestinians, three mindsets of the Palestinians and the Israelis, so that for each mindset, which comprises both Palestinians and Israelis, we know exactly what they can agree on. The Edison Awards means to us recognition that there is a nobler cause, that Thomas Edison's inventiveness, his innovation, has not stopped, but has the spirit of such innovation has gone into people like ourselves who lived generations after him and that were able to transform his genius into social progress.